Oxford Reading Tree Stories. Stage 9. Decode and Develop. A Night in Town. This story is called A Night in Town. When you hear this sound, Turn the page. Run! Shouted Biff. The dragon's coming this way! Biff, Chip, and Anina were on an adventure. The magic key had brought them to a land where there were dragons. The children sprinted towards the castle. Behind them, a huge dragon roared and raged. They reached the castle just in time. They charged through the great wooden door and some men quickly pushed it shut. The children heard the roar of the dragon from the other side. This door will keep any dragon out! Grunted one of the gatekeepers. I don't think so, said Anina. It's a wooden door and dragons breathe fire. Oh, said the man. I didn't think of that. There haven't been any dragons here for years, explained another gatekeeper. Usually they stay far off in the mountains. The children heard a clanking sound behind them. A group of knights in armor were walking towards the door. The biggest knight held his helmet under one arm. You can leave the dragon to us now, he told the gatekeepers. What are you going to do? asked Chip. The big knight glanced down at the three children. Battle the dragon, of course, he boomed. That's what knights do! Percy's not afraid of anything, said one of the others, pointing at the big knight. Anina looked worried. Oh, the dragon's scary, but I hope the knights won't hurt it, she said. I don't want to see that. Don't worry, said Biff. Look! The magic key was glowing in her hand. But the adventure isn't over yet, Chip exclaimed. Percy had his helmet on now, ready for battle. As he walked towards his horse, he bumped into Chip. To stop himself from falling, Chip reached out and grabbed Percy's arm. At that moment, the magic whisked the children home. We're back home before the end of the adventure, complained Chip. That doesn't usually happen. There's something else unusual, too, said Anina. Biff and Chip turned and saw a big suit of armor. Then the armor moved. Percy lifted his helmet off and stared down at the children. What strange magic is this? he demanded. He looked around. And what is this nightmarish place? Biff was shocked. All she could say was, Um, it's my bedroom. Downstairs, Kipper was making cookies with Gran. Mom and Dad were away, and so Gran was looking after the children. Chip came to the kitchen door. Gran, can you help us, please? Gran saw how worried Chip was. Is everything okay? She asked. Before Chip could answer, Percy appeared behind him. A knight! Cried Kipper in surprise. Percy bowed towards Gran. 
Then he asked, Are you the ruler of this strange land? Gran was just as surprised as Kipper, but she hid it well. Yes, she said. I am. Gran led everyone into the living room. Sit there, she told Percy. And don't let your armor rip the sofa, please. She turned to the children. Now tell me exactly what happened. When they had finished, Gran scratched her head. Hmm, you're right, she said. This is very unusual. Suddenly, the oven timer peeped in the kitchen. Percy leapt up, ready for battle. Sit back down, Gran told him. That sound just means the cookies are ready to eat. She went to the door. Biff and Chip, can you come and help me, please? In the kitchen, Gran whispered, It's very important that we don't let anyone else see Percy. What would people think of a real knight in armor? We'll just have to keep him here until the key glows again. Anina and Kipper were not sure what to say to Percy. The knight sat silently on the sofa. Let's watch television, suggested Kipper, clicking the remote control. <laughs> when he saw the television, Percy's eyes opened wide in shock. <gasps> Who trapped those tiny people in your magic mirror? he demanded. Uh, I'll just turn the television off, <laughs> said Kipper quickly. Percy jumped up. <gasps> enough, he shouted. I've had enough of this terrible place and its strange magic. I must go back to where I belong. I'll battle any army to find my way home. I'll slay any dragon. There aren't any dragons here, said Anina kindly. Just then, a loud rumble from outside made the windows shake. A big truck drove past with a yellow digger on the back. <gasps> a dragon! shouted Percy. He clanked towards the front door. When Biff, Chip, and Gran heard all the shouting, they came running. Huh? Where's Percy? asked Chip. He's gone, said Kipper. He ran outside, added Anina. He went chasing after a digger. He thinks it's a dragon. They all hurried to the front door. There was no sign of Percy on the street. We'd better catch up with him before he gets into any trouble, said Gran. I bet that digger was going to the town center, said Chip. They're building a new library there. The children and Gran set off. Round the corner they saw a man in a bike helmet. Excuse me, said Biff. Have you seen a knight in armor? Huh. Yes, said the cyclist crossly. He watched me ride up on my bike. Then when I stopped, he grabbed it and rode off on it. Gran and the children hurried on, until at last they saw the building site. Look! Said Chip, pointing. The workers are unloading the digger from the back of the truck. But I can't see Percy anywhere. Where is he? Suddenly, a loud voice from across the road boomed. Get ready to meet your doom, foul beast! Percy was sitting on the bike and staring right at the digger. In one hand, he waved a colorful umbrella. That's our umbrella, said Chip. Percy set off towards the digger, holding the umbrella out like a sword. He wobbled a bit at first, 
but soon he was going faster and faster. The children waved their arms. Stop! Shouted Biff. That isn't a dragon. Percy had not learned how to use the brakes. When he saw the children, he swerved the bike away from them and bumped right into the curb. Be careful! Shouted Chip. But it was too late. Percy landed with a loud clang. Percy sat with his head in his hands. I just want to go home, he said glumly. I think you're in luck then, said Anina with a smile. Show him, Biff. Biff held up the magic key, which had begun to glow faintly again. On the way home, Gran made sure that Percy took the bike back and said sorry. By the time they reached the house, the magic key was glowing brighter. What now? asked Percy. The children led him back to Biff's room. It's time for you to go home, said Biff. The magic did take Percy back to his world, and it took Biff, Chip, and Anina there again, too. Percy was glad to be back. The other knights came running up to him. Where have you been, Percy? asked one. We have to slay that dragon right now! No! said Anina firmly. There has to be another way. Don't be silly, began one of the knights. Anina went on. That dragon's a long way from home. It must be lost and confused. She glanced at Percy. You know how that feels, don't you? Percy nodded, remembering his own adventure. But we have to slay the dragon, said the other knight. That's what knights do. Percy shook his head. That's not true. We do the right thing. At that moment, Chip and Biff spotted something in the sky. A second, much bigger dragon was swooping down. Maybe it's the other dragon's parent, said Anina. This dragon looked big enough to crush the castle walls with its claws. One flick of its tail could smash the castle's turrets to rubble. But the new dragon left the castle alone. It swooped low and gently scooped up the smaller dragon with its front legs. Then, flapping its huge wings, it turned round and began to fly home towards the mountains. Anina watched until the dragons were no more than a dot in the distance. Now the adventure's really over, said Chip. I bet we'll go home soon. Percy smiled. Perhaps one day I too will return to your land. I'd like to see Queen Gran again and try the mysterious food known as cookies. Published and copyrighted by Oxford University Press.